My name is Jeremy Mahalik, and I'm going to be today addressing the question, are federal policies targeting the right plug-in vehicles? Uh, I'm an associate professor in the Department of Engineering and Public Policy and the Department of Mechanical Engineering, and I direct the Design Decisions Laboratory and the Vehicle Electrification Group, and I'm also a member of the Green Design Institute and the Center for Energy and Climate Decision Making, and there are members from each of these groups that were involved in the research I'll talk about today. So to understand the benefits of plug-in vehicles, we first have to understand the different types of electrification possibilities. We're all familiar with conventional vehicles that run on gasoline, and for years we've had access to hybrid electric vehicles like the Toyota Prius, which still run entirely on gasoline but have a small battery pack on board and a, uh, a small electric motor to help improve fuel efficiency. Newer vehicles like plug-in hybrid electric vehicles have somewhat larger battery packs that can be plugged into the wall to charge up and store energy that can be used to propel that vehicle partially using the electricity from the battery pack and when that runs out switch to gasoline for uh, longer trips. This is like the Chevy Volt. And finally battery electric vehicles like the Nissan Leaf have no gasoline backup and re rely only on electricity stored in the battery pack so they need a much larger battery pack in order to obtain a reasonable range. As we move from right to left on this uh, chart, we require larger battery packs in order to make the uh, vehicles functional. Now, all else being equal, adding more batteries to a vehicle is going to allow the vehicle to drive longer distances using electricity instead of gasoline, and that's a good thing. However, these batteries are very expensive. In fact, they can be the most expensive part of the vehicle. They're also heavy, and lugging around that extra weight can reduce fuel efficiency, and the production of the batteries themselves have implications for the environment. And so to know which is better on balance requires an analysis of the entire life cycle of the uh, owning and operating a vehicle. We see on the right that uh, different automakers are taking different strategies in terms of how to size the batteries in their vehicles. And the federal government is encouraging automakers to put larger batteries in vehicles. The uh, stimulus package of 2009 gives a $2,500 tax credit for vehicles that have at least four kilowatt hours worth of battery, which is about the size of a plug-in version of the Prius. And they give up to $7,500 for uh, vehicles with a 16 kilowatt hour battery pack, which is the size of a, of a Chevy Volt. So the government's saying the more batteries you put on the vehicle, the more taxpayers should subsidize that vehicle. And this leads me to believe that policymakers must believe larger battery packs are better in some way, provide more environmental ben benefit. And we wanted to test uh, and see if that is true. So what we looked at was, uh, first, how much can electric vehicles help? We know that electric vehicles are going to reduce gasoline consumption, which addresses dependency on foreign oil and other costs associated with consuming gasoline. And we also know that electric vehicles are going to change the emissions profile associated with driving. With electric vehicles, we'll have fewer of the emissions that are associated with gasoline production and combustion but we'll have more of the emissions associated with producing electricity and producing gasoline. Again, on balance, to know what's better, we need to do a full assessment from cradle to grave. So this is what we did, considering not just tailpipe emissions, but emissions from refineries, power plants, and even upstream emissions from things like mines. And we looked at air emissions, uh, things like costs to human health, respiratory problems that people get from uh, air pollution, damages to agriculture and infrastructure, and climate change. And then we also looked at uh, issues with petroleum consumption. By, by consuming petroleum, I also cause other uh, costs to the U.S. economy. One of those is supply vulnerability. The more gasoline we consume, the more sensitive our economy is in the case that the supply of oil were to be disrupted. Uh, number two is what we call the monopsony premium, meaning the more oil we consume, the more we raise the price of oil in the world market, and therefore we pay more for all the remaining barrels of oil that we purchase. And the third is military spending, and the question here is, if we were to reduce or eliminate gasoline consumption from personal transportation, how much would we expect the government to reduce military spending in the world as a result? And there's a lot of details in the study, but among the uh, most important results are shown here. What you're seeing is on the x-axis, is the size of the battery pack in the vehicle. And the blue dots represent some of the vehicles we tested. HEV is hybrid electric vehicle, like a Prius. 
PHEV plug-in hybrid electric vehicle with sized for a 20 or a 60 kilometer battery pack. That's again similar to the uh, plug-in version of the Prius and the Chevy Volt respectively. And then a battery electric vehicle, we looked at one with a 150 mile range, about double the range of the Nissan LEAF, but a little bit more realistic as a potential primary vehicle. And the y-axis shows you the dollar value of all of those air emissions and oil displacement benefits that I mentioned. The red line is the current federal tax credit, which shows as the battery pack gets larger, there's more taxpayer subsidy. And if you look at the blue dots, what they show is our best estimate of these air emissions and oil displacement benefits are relatively small compared to that federal tax credit, but maybe more importantly, they don't necessarily get larger as the battery pack gets larger. In fact, they may get smaller. Now, if we get, uh, the, the, I should say, the blue dot is based on uh, assuming that all the electricity that we get to charge the vehicle comes from the average source in the United States. If we were to get all of our electricity from the cleanest possible source, say a zero emission source, which is labeled hydro on the graph, then we would see some benefits associated with larger battery packs, but it's still relatively flat not the same kind of benefits, dramatic benefits that are shown by the um, federal tax credit. And it could go the other way if we're charging our electric vehicles from coal-fired power plants, that could result in actually increasing damages relative to today's conventional vehicles. So the main takeaways here, the benefits are important, but they're smaller than the uh, current federal tax credit. Uh, the trend does not match the policy, we don't see substantially increasing uh, benefits associated with larger battery packs. And to be a good value, plug-in vehicles have to be cost competitive with their alternatives. And the vehicles that are most cost competitive here are the ones on the left. Hybrid electric vehicles and plug-in vehicles that have a relatively small battery pack. Short electric range followed by gasoline when you take longer trips. Here's another way to think of that. The current policy gives up to $7,500 per vehicle for up to 200,000 vehicles per manufacturer. So that's $1.5 billion. If we have $1.5 billion worth of subsidies to spend, and we spend it all on subsidizing the purchase premium of a hybrid electric vehicle, we could buy about 400,000 of those vehicles, and we would reduce damages by about $350 million. But if we were to spend that same pool of money trying to buy battery electric vehicles that are more expensive, we couldn't buy as many of them, and the net amount of benefits we would produce would be quite a bit lower. The bottom line is that hybrid electric vehicles and plug-in vehicles with uh, small battery packs provide the most amount of social benefits per dollar spent. It could be in the future that large battery packs will become more competitive. Uh, we would need cheaper batteries, more expensive gasoline, uh, we would need cleaner electricity and uh, long battery life, so we're not replacing these batteries before the end of life. And we'd have to overcome some of the issues with range. But I would argue that even if this is the f turns out to be the future, still the best way to get there could be to focus on the vehicles that are most competitive and provide the most benefits now. Our efforts to disseminate this information has included policy briefs on Capitol Hill, discussions with automakers, input to the National Petroleum Council study on future transportation fuels requested by the Department of Energy, and some uh, articles in, in magazines and uh, appearances in the media. And if you'd like to find out more about this study or the other work that we do in the Vehicle Electrification Group, you can go to www.cmu.edu slash CIT slash VEG.